the glass you see cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee God everlasting through eternity Everyone together, holy, holy, all over the nation, holy, 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 Lord God, come on, no matter where you are, early, early in the morning, our souls shall rise to thee. And he is mighty. God, three persons, blessed Trinity. Let me hear the choir do ooh, ooh. Welcome to worship today here at Witherspoon Presbyterian Church. On this first Sunday, where we remember again the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Receive now this call to worship taken out of Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me and devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. 
one thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I ask, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. I will remain confident. In this, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Again, I say, wait on the Lord. We've come to worship today with hearts filled with thanksgiving, with mouths filled with praise, for he is holy. There is none like him in all the earth. We invite you to center your hearts, beloved. We bring our whole selves here within this sacred place. And for those of you who are worshiping with us online, we know that God dwells there with you as well. For the Bible says, wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, he will be in the midst. And so again, good morning and welcome to worship here at Witherspoon. I want to invite Mrs. Betty Jo Douglas to come and to lead us in our morning invocation. Wherever you are, pray along with her as she leads us in prayer this day. Mrs. Douglas. Morning, Mother Spoon. Yeah. Oh Lord, our God, we gather, we gather together today to give you thanks and praise for your greatness. Thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. Thank you for your great love and care, Lord. May nothing separate us from your presence today. Teach us how to choose only your way today. So each step will lead us closer to you. Help us to walk by the word and not our feelings. Help us to keep our heart pure and undivided. Protect us from our own carelessness, thoughts, words and actions help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you renew our spirit and fill us with your peace today make our hearts ready to receive your word for us center us oh god and keep you with us today remove our needless ardor and be our stronghold. Grant us calm, renew our strength, and refresh our souls. We offer this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, we say welcome to worship here at Witherspoon. May the Spirit of God dwell with you and bless you richly. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen.
been good to me. Could have been dead sleeping in my grave, but you made old devil step back and behave. Lord, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way.
We thank God for his continued mercies and grace. For he truly has brought us a mighty long way. Each month, beloved, we pause to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries here at Witherspoon. And certainly the month of August is jam-packed with birthday celebrations and anniversary celebrations we pause to honor at this time. On August the 6th, Aida Sims Cowens. On the 7th, Braylon Satterfield. On the 9th, Courtney Montgomery. On the 11th, Rihanna Perry and Morgan Wood. On the 14th, Gerald Graham. On the 15th, Dobby Smith. On the 21st, Sherman Bunnell. On the 23rd, Jillian Harrison Jones, Yvonne Rawls, and Muriel Treadwell. On the 25th, Billy Moore and Stephen Scott Jr. Sr. On the 27th, Robert Raglan. On the 29th, Terry Cross Gray and Celeste Mann. And on the 31st, Vicki Wims. Clap your hands and let us celebrate all those who celebrate life in the month of August. And then anniversaries are jammed packed as well. On the second, John and Karen Walden. On the fourth, Robert and Sharon Branch. On the 10th, Portia and Marvin Chandler. On the 16th, Marilyn and Stephen Scott Sr. On the 17th, Andrew and Billy Moore. On the 21st, Luther and Courtney Montgomery. On the 26th, Edward and Rosie Hicks. And also on the 26th, Corey and Rudy Wilson. Clap your hands and let us honor all of those who celebrate the gift of love and union during this month. Our prayer for you is that God bless you with many more years of life, of strength, of vitality, and of joy. Let the church say amen. I want to invite Elder Muriel Treadwell to come and lead us in our in memoriam. We are reminded each day that we stand on the shoulders of great men and women who have gone on before us and who have captured the promise set before us. For even the Apostle Paul says that we run this race so that we may one day receive our crown in glory above. Center your hearts as we remember those who have gone on before us. While remembering those faithful Witherspoon servants who transitioned to the church triumphant through the years in the month of August, we are reminded of these words written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. So we who have hope and faith in the promises of Jesus the Christ lovingly lift up the names of these individuals. Denise LaRue, Doyle Pryor, Paul Leach, Herman K. Walker, Reverend Nathan Dampty, Ruby L. Thomas, James Good, Johnny May Osborne, Armitry Christian, Herbert Inskey, Gloria Dozier, E.P. Thomas, Anna Louise Williams, William H. Scott, Thomas Horner, Colonel William C.W. Barton, Cora Lee Young, Ulysses O. Brown, Ben Malone, Julia Gray Belmar, Louise Gray Harris, Robert Williams, Robert Satterfield Jr., Eugene Buckner, Winifred Davis, Betty Wharton, Frederick Pittman, Frederick Johnson, William Freeman Jr., Harry Hawkins, Marvin C. Foster, Angel O. Cocky, Vivian M. Tate, Frank J. Woods, Charles Harry III, William Bill Garrett, and Rebecca Nelson. By their energies, the church was gathered, given order, and continued 
Remembering all those Christians who have gone before us, may we follow as they followed in the way, truth, and life of Jesus Christ, the head of the church. Amen. Amen again. As we prepare to hear God's holy word read today, beloved, I want to draw your attention to two scriptures. For those of you here in the sanctuary and for those of you at home, they will appear on the screens so that we may read together. I want to go both to 2 Corinthians and then I will go over to the Psalms. But there is a word from God today that he has laid upon my heart that I want to do my best to tell the gospel story. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 12, we find these writings from the Apostle Paul to the Ecclesia there in the city of Corinth. And I want to read these words first out of the New International Version and then out of the Message Bible. Read along with me with both your head and your heart. The Apostle Paul says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. For we always carry in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Listen to these verses again now out of the Message Bible given to us by Arthur Eugene H. Peterson. If you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around in the unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. As it is, there's not much chance of that. You know for yourselves that we're not much to look at. We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't been broken. What they did to Jesus, they do to us. Trial and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus did among them, he does in you. He lives. Our lives are at constant risk for Jesus' sake, which makes Jesus' life all the more evident in us. While we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. And now Psalm, the 30th chapter, and the 5th verse. Hear now these familiar words. I want to lift up just the B clause of this text. Weeping may endure for a night, but somebody say joy cometh in the morning. Amen. I want to invite Mrs. Jillian Harrison Jones to come and lead us in our hymn of preparation. We thank God for touching her body and for her being back with us again. There's a song entitled Precious Lord. And we dedicate this song to each of you today who may be weary, tattered, and worn. Know that we serve a precious Lord 
that's promised to lead us every step of the way may this song inspire your heart and prepare us for the word of god let the church say amen
tide I am weak I am born through the storm through the night lead me on to the Precious Lord, and lead me home. Lift your hands and say yes, yes. Come on, that's your testimony. Yes. Yes, yes, oh yes, come on and say yes, yes, oh yes, Lord, oh, say Come on and let me hear you. To your call, Lord, we say yes. To your way, we say yes. To your supreme and divine will, we say yes. From the bottom of our hearts, out of the depths of our souls, we say yes. Come now, Holy Spirit, and dwell with us, abide with us. Ignite our hearts, refresh our souls. Feed us, O oh Lord, until we want no more. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me until we want no more. May we drink, O oh Lord, out of the stream of living water. May we eat of heavenly manna. May our strength be renewed. May our focus be made clear. May our way be lit by the light of the cross. 
Now, blessed Savior, let the words of my mouth and the sweet meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Let the church say, let the church say, let the church say amen. If you love the Lord, clap your hands. I want to preach today, beloved, from the title, Midnight Tears and Morning Blessings. Midnight Tears and Morning Blessings. And then, as it is my custom, I was inspired even more this morning as I I walked through our home and I saw a portrait on our wall, Elder Bright, by a local artist by the name of Deanna Craig. And I want to offer this subtopic for today, Beauty in the Midnight Garden. Beauty in the Midnight, the Midnight Garden. I am often asked, beloved, how is it that we who are proclaimers of the gospel, Kathy Bradley, remain inspired during these days? There was a article, a discussion this week with many pastors, many of whom are my friends, all bearing testimony, Mr. Ritley as to how difficult navigating these last several months have been. And certainly, the ups and downs of life befall us all, but there is, I would argue, a, a special kind of burden that we who are proclaimers of the good news oftentimes bear. And I must admit, even for me, it sometimes feels difficult, if not impossible, to see the light at the end of a tunnel that seems never to end. Comment after comment was made on this article as preachers, proclaimers, men and women all over the nation and even the world gave their own testimonies and I, I offered mine. I said for me during these days, I've learned to listen, not to the words spoken, but to words unspoken. I've learned to listen in the words of Dr. Howard Thurman to the algorithms of the human heart. I've, I've learned to tend my ear, my heart, my soul, my pastoral call, to what is oftentimes not said. Here at Witherspoon, we have what we call the war room, where we have gathered since the beginning of the pandemic every day. And oftentimes, people call my name. I do not answer, but I am there. And what am I doing? I am listening, Rose, to the voices of those who gather. I listen not for greetings. I listen not truly for joys, though joy is a part of our journey. I, I listen for the tenor and the texture of the human voice. I've learned to notice that subtle crackle. I've learned to notice the change in tone. I've even noticed how to hear the voice and know of the condition of the human body. And though while we are greeting one another and are sincerely happy to be together again, I've, I've learned to feel the burden of those who journey what is sometimes a difficult and dark road. Dr. King on the steps of the courthouse in Montgomery, Alabama, after the success of the Montgomery bus boycott, delivered a speech 
that has gone down in history under the title, How Long? And the response has been, not long. But this week, as I listened to that proclamation by Dr. King, I, I said to myself, though we do believe that weeping will only endure for a night, and we do hope that joy cometh in the morning, it seems between those two statements, how long and then not long, there sometimes seems to be an entire eternity. For we all ask, how long? How long will the pandemic endure? How long will sickness afflict our bodies? How long will this night end? How long must we cry? How long must we journey through the unforeseen and uncharted territories of this age? How long must we battle with multiple pandemics, COVID being in many cases the least of them? How long was we battle against racism and white supremacy? How long was we battle against crime gone rampant? How, how long must the cries of America's children go unanswered? How long, and even though I proclaim the gospel and I believe in the word of God, even sometimes I tremble to answer that question because if I say not long, I may be a liar. For I do not know how long we must endure though many come to me daily and ask of me questions of prophecy i do not count myself at all to be a prophet for i too rise in the morning and read the news just like you i too am afflicted i too am burdened i too oftentimes ask for grace to put one foot in front of the other. I said to my wife this week that there is a sense of despondency in the world. I can hear it. Both within the voices of the members of this sacred congregation and those who I have come in contact with, I, I can feel the burden that these days have placed upon all of our hearts. And I can hear, even if these words exactly are not spoken, I, I hear us all wondering and whispering in the recesses of our heart, Lord, how long? And we wait with bated breath, hoping to hear the answer, not long. But sometimes this answer, Betty and Charles, does not come. How do you handle life when the future is unknown? How do you navigate a road that has not been trodden before? How do you remain faithful, beloved, when everything in you seems depleted and empty? How long is the answer? What happens when God does not reply? What happens when our only directives are to continue to pray and to continue to be faithful? What happens when God shuts up heaven and there, there is no rain? What happens when our hearts become parched, dry, and that living water seems not to reach our deepest need? The psalmist David knew something about dark places. The psalmist David knew something about journeying through uncharted territory. We often quote the words of that great psalm, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But even sometimes that word through seems never to have an end. David knew something about tears. David knew something about the pressures of life. David knew something about striving to hold on to the promises of God, but seemingly your hand slips, or as he says in another psalm, even my feet almost stumble. David knew something about having to call out to God in desperation. And I dare say I'm talking to somebody today that knows something about a midnight prayer. I think I'm talking to someone here in the sanctuary and, and even at home that knows something about shedding tears during the midnight hour, pouring out your heart, asking God for help, and waiting with bated breath, hoping that God will come to your 
rescue. The psalmist David offers us these words in the B clause of this text. And I take offense with the wording today. I remember hearing as a child these words read. And like many of you, I've heard them read all of my life. Weeping may endure for a night. And as is our Christian custom, we speed past that which we do not want to endure. And everybody races towards joy comes in the morning. But I've lived long enough to know that it is not that weeping may endure for a night. But I've lived long enough to know that sometimes weeping will endure for a night. And night is not calculated by hours. Night is calculated by the will of God. Sometimes night does not end on our own clock tables. Sometimes we as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ must wrestle with the reality that sometimes our lot is to wrestle in the night. To learn how to pray in the night, to suffer in the night, to praise in the night. Sometimes God will not deliver us. Sometimes God's will is that we develop the resilience to stick it out. And not throw in the towel. David says weeping may. I've learned that sometimes weeping will. So what do we do, beloved? When the temptation is to quit. How do we navigate these days that seem hard and dark? If you are saying, Pastor Sir, if God will not deliver us from the darkness, then what do we do while we are in the darkness? I'm glad you asked. For there is a well, beloved that we draw supernatural power from. Sometimes, as I've said already, God's plan is not to deliver us from, but to strengthen us in. I remember being at the art show a few years ago when I first met Deanna Craig. And this strange picture caught my heart's attention. It is hung here in the gallery at Witherspoon several months. I remember asking Deanna, what is the story behind this picture? It's, it's sort of dark and gruesome, but, but I do see light and I can pluck out flowers and, and leaves. What is the narrative behind the story? What was your inspiration? She said to me, Pastor, the title of this piece is Beauty in the Midnight Garden. I said, what do you mean, Deanna? She said, well, we associate beauty with light only. We associate with joy with light, glee with light, celebration with light. She looked at me and I looked at her. She said, but I've come to realize that even when there is no light there, there's still beauty to be found, even in a midnight garden. That the darkness does not necessarily rob the garden of its beauty. It's this that we must see beauty differently. Our eyes must adjust. And likewise, this is true in our Christian journey, beloved. There is beauty to be found even in a midnight garden. There's joy to be found even in tough places. There, there are rose petals even among the thorns and we must not lose hope. We must not be overcome by despair. We must ask God to show us beauty. Give us joy. Fill our hearts with glee even when there is sometimes no light to be found. Life is sometimes, beloved, a midnight garden. And I've learned to navigate in the dark. I've learned to praise in the dark. I've learned to lift my hands in the dark. I've learned to give God praise in the dark. I've learned that there is beauty 
even in a midnight garden. I remember preaching in Rochester, New York a few years ago at the Mount Olivet Baptist Church from whence I come. At that time, we divided the Advent sermons among the young ministers and I, I was given the Advent theme of joy. And I remember preaching a sermon entitled Four Ways and Four Reasons to Have Joy. And I remember giving the congregation there in Rochester these four ideals. I said that sometimes you've got to learn how to have joy in. You've got to learn how to have joy through. You've got to learn how to have joy in spite of. And you've got to learn how to have joy because of. Let me say that one more time. Sometimes, beloved, we've got to learn how to have joy in. You've got to learn how to praise God wherever you are with bad diagnoses and with the world going topsy-turvy. You've got to learn to find a well to nourish your spirit no matter where you are. I've learned how to lift my hands in the midnight, how to pray in the midnight, how to get what I need in the midnight. You've got to learn how to thank God regardless of where you are, and you've got to learn how to have joy through. That's why David says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For the temptation is always to give up. Is that not what happened to Moses at the Red Sea? Or David when he faced Goliath? Is that not what happened to Esther in fear of going before the king? Life places before us, beloved, obstacles and hills. But I hear a song by Inez Andrews that says, Lord, don't move the mountain. Just give me the strength to climb. I believe sometimes we pray the wrong prayer, beloved. We ask God to rid us of trouble and rid us of pain. We ask God to remove the enemy. We ask God to cast out the demon. But sometimes God's will is not that we cast out the demon. Sometimes God's will is that we learn how to look the demon in the face and say, by the power of Jesus Christ, I stand as a testament that I am a child of God. My life is blessed, my, my walk is blessed, and I am covered by the will of God. You've got to learn how to take a licking and keep on ticking. Then, beloved, as I leave you now, you've got to learn how to have joy in, through, and then in spite of. I remember hearing Dr. Jasper Williams preach one day, the pastor of the New Salem Baptist Church in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Dr. Jasper Williams preached a sermon called God's Answered Prayers, or rather God's Answer to Prayer. And he said that day that God has multiple answers to prayers. God can say yes, God can say no, and God can say not yet. And we all live in some way, beloved, between this Trinitarian response. What if God says no? And then what if God says yes? And then what happens to our resolve when God says not yet? We all live bobbing and weaving between these three Christological responses. But I've learned, beloved, that you've got to learn how to sometimes have joy in spite of. Because if you do not learn how to have joy in spite of, every time the winds of life blow like tumbleweed, you'll go down the street. Every time something does not go your way, you're throwing the towel. Every time your feelings are hurt, you want to quit. That's not what it means to be a child of God. Sometimes you've got to plant your feet like the psalmist David says and says, I'm going to be like a tree planted. 
I may bend, I may bob, and I may sometimes weave, but I will not break. Sometimes we owe God and in spite of praise. We do not control our days, nor do we control the will of God. But every day there's a blessing to be found. Every day there's manna to be received. Every day, like the prophet Isaiah, or Elijah rather, who had to go out on the mountain one day and listen for the voice of God. And the Bible says God did not speak in thunder nor in an earthquake, but God spoke with the gentle breeze. Sometimes God will not respond with loud proclamation. And sometimes God will not quiet the noise of the world. Sometimes we must center ourselves to hear the gentle breeze. Even the slaves knew something about this. For as their bodies were brutalized, tormented, and dehumanized in every way, I can hear them swaying in the breeze of the night and singing up above my head. I hear music shh, in the air. Swing low, sweet chair. Sometimes it's in the stillness of our own consciousness that God will speak. And lastly, beloved, David does give us hope. For he says that in God's timing, joy will come. And so weeping may endure for a night. You must have joy in, through, in spite of. And yet Paul helps us with this last one. We must have joy because of. Paul says we cannot quit. Paul says we cannot throw away the towel. Paul says we ought not be so overwhelmed by the tribulations of this world. Why, Paul? Because Paul says we have this treasure in our earthen bodies. And that's the good news today, beloved, that though we are battered, tormented, and torn, distressed, is that not what Paul said? We still have something inside of us that darkness cannot steal. We have something inside of us that robbers cannot take away. We've got something inside of us which is the light of Jesus Christ and no matter where we are and no matter how hard the road, as long as God is with us, as long as God lives inside, as long as our souls remain anchored and our feet remain stable, as long as our souls remain sure and our ears remain tuned, God has promised to build a hedge of protection around us so that no hurt, harm, nor danger will come nigh thee. No, as the choir comes now, I am not a prophet. But I do know a man named Jesus. I do not have any unique prophecy for your hearts today. And though the night may sometimes linger on long beyond our own comfort and expectations, Remember that God is with us all. He has promised never to leave us. And that there is joy to be found even in midnight gardens. So cry if you must. We all get tired. We all get weary. We all become worn 
tattered and beaten by the waves of this world. But James Cleveland got a song that says, I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told us, beloved, that the road would be easy. But I believe today that he would not bring us this far. I believe today, beloved, that God would not bring us this far. I believe, beloved, that God would not bring you this far to leave you. So if we must praise in the midnight hour, so be it. We do it together. We do it with God. We do it on one accord, knowing that there is beauty even in midnight gardens. The word of God, for we who are the people of God, thanks be to God. I have a cousin who lost his spouse this week and I have friends who have had to go to ER this week all of us are tired but we got to keep going
I don't believe he brought me this far just to leave me. Sing it again, sing it again. I don't. talking about you ought to stand on your feet no I can't believe, I can't believe he brought me here just to say, Keisha, you're on your own. No, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. I don't believe. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe. I don't believe. Oh, 
don't I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't believe. Stay right there. There's someone today who feels like giving up. Someone came to worship today on the frayed ends of what may seem sometimes to be your last rope. I don't know how long the midnight will last, beloved. But I've come to encourage you that God's got some blessings for you. Even in the midnight garden. I have no control over the schisms and the isms of this world. But God has promised us strength that we can draw from in, through, in spite of, and because of. And though the S-U in is sometimes head behind the clouds of life, the S-O in lives inside of us. I pray this prayer today for those who are in need of extra strength, encouragement, inspiration. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for your word today through song and through the proclamation of the gospel. God, we thank you for how you know just what we need when we need it. We thank you, O oh Lord, that the words of that song are true. You are an on-time God. And though you may not come when we want you to come, you've proven time and time again you'll always be right on time. God, thank you for your hand of mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your heavenly power that rest on us each and every day. God, we thank you for reminders that you continue to give us that you are not far, that even though sometimes the walls of life seem to close in around us and the dark clouds of despondency hover low, there's still beauty to be found, even in the midnight garden. Though we weep, during the midnight hour, Lord. Give us the kind of joy that can remain steadfast in. Give us the kind of faith that remains strong through. Give us the kind of resilience that learns how to continue to move forward in spite of. Yes. 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 But give us the kind of praise wherein we can say thank you, Lord because of because you are our savior because you are our friend because you are our guide because we know we are not alone dwell with us oh lord forever endow us bless us keep us for those who may be weak today for those who may be sick for those who are battling bereavement for those that do not know which way to turn. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge. May we rest under your wings of care forever and ever. Let the church say, Amen. amen. If you love the Lord, let the church say, Amen. If you feel better now than you did when you walked in, let the church say amen. amen. I don't believe I don't. I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't.
Give our music ministry a hand, beloved. We come now to celebrate Holy Communion. I want to invite Mrs. Betty Merriweather to come and to lead us in our communion prayer. Those of you worshiping at home, we pray that God bless your elements, that we may worship Holy Communion together. Let us pray. that you would still our minds and quiet our hearts as we approach this communion table today. We ask that you would draw each one of us into ever closer fellowship with yourself as we partake together of the bread and wine in grateful remembrance of what you did for each one of us on Calvary's cross. As we gather today around your table today, we pray that you will fill our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Transform us, Lord, and make us more like you. Endow us with faith to believe and trust in all things. Help us to cross the red seas of life so that we may experience the fullness of your promise for our lives. We ask all of these things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, choir, praise him.
Everybody praise him. Come on, let heaven hear you. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Bless him. Bless him. He's one. Join me, beloved, in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Those of you in the sanctuary and at home, join me as we celebrate Holy Communion. The Bible says on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. After blessing it and giving thanks, he said these words, this is my body broken for you. Each time you do this, do this, remembering me, let us eat. Then the Bible said, he likewise took the cup. After pouring and blessing it, he lifted it and said these words, this is my blood shed for you each time you do this do this remembering me let us drink let the church say amen, amen. let us stand all over the building and recite and profess that which we believe by way of the apostles creed Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let the church say amen. You may be seated. Come on, choir. Jesus. Bless it, bless it, Savior. He's worthy. He's worthy too. Come on, last time from the rising. Come on, Kathy.
Blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. He is worthy to be blessed. Stay right there. Stay right there. Thank you, Kathy Bradley. Give Kathy a hand. <laughs> Beloved, there may be someone here who does not know Jesus. We pause to open the doors of the church and to extend the invitation to discipleship. There may be someone listening online or here in the sanctuary who finds yourself in a midnight garden. And though sometimes it does not seem as though there is beauty to be found, what gives you the ability and what gives us all the ability to champion and to choose to trust God is to be connected to his word and connected to him. I say often that it is impossible, beloved, to make it through this world by yourself. And so whether you're here in the sanctuary or online, call the church, beloved, and allow this new season to be marked by a new walk, a new talk, and a new way. Then there may be someone here who does not have a church home. Witherspoon would love to be your church family. So not only do we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship, on the screens there's also an invitation to come and be a part of the Witherspoon family. We do not claim any kind of supernatural perfection, but we are Christians, pilgrims if you will, striving our best to do our best every day. If you do not have a church home, won't you consider Witherspoon to be a part of your extension? We thank God in advance for you answering the call. You may call us, you may email us, you may come by, and we would love for you to come and be a part. Makes no difference who you are, red or yellow, black and white. We're all precious in his sight. Let the church say amen. And then each week we thank those of you for your continued generosity. There are several ways to give. The information is on the screen. You may give by mail or going online and giving through our safe and secure portal. And then for those of you in the sanctuary, we ask that you continue to sow into this ministry. We are able to do that which we do on the level that we do it because of your continued generosity. With a spoon and friends of With a Spoon, we thank you always for sowing seeds of faith in this ministry. And we pray that the Lord continue to endow us with many more years of vital and life-giving ministry because of you and your obedience. For the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And so let us continue, particularly during these summer months, to keep our giving strong, to put God first, and to remember that you can't be God-given, but you can try. Let the church say amen. Elder Betty Jo Ross Lloyd is in the narthex with a basket for those of you who are in the sanctuary. And Dr. Andrew Moore is here for those of you who are in the sanctuary. And so on your way out, please place those gifts in the basket that they may be accounted for. I want to lift up only two announcements today. First, let me give congratulations. Oh, I forgot. You can also give via text. Let the church say amen. That information is likewise on the screens. Let me first say to the women of PWW, my hat, though I don't have a hat on right now, goes off to you for a wonderful Women's Month celebration. I'm outnumbered in the sanctuary, so I won't throw shade. But let me say thank you to the moderator, uh, Elder Nikki Graham, and to Courtney Montgomery, to Rhonda Porter, to Karen Walden, to all those who serve on the executive committee for a month-long celebration par excellence. And so I thank you for seeing the vision and for seizing the day and for raising the standard. Now, men of Witherspoon, August is men's month. Somebody say amen. 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 Our theme this year is faith over fear. Men standing firm on the word of God. And so, please stay tuned for more details. I see Deacon Microsberry. I know he and his committee 
are ready for a month of wonderful engagement, of Christian discipleship, and of celebrating what it means to have brotherhood within the body of Christ. And so this week you will receive a mailing and various emails from the men of Witherspoon pertaining to details of our Men's Day celebration. Lastly, beloved, we have put out a help wanted advertisement for those who may have interest and skills in IT. As Witherspoon continues to grow, we want to dibble and dabble into new technologies, scanning and mass text messages, uh, voice recordings, all of those sort of things that give us a better opportunity to stay connected to you. We need people to manage our Facebook site, our Instagram site, our YouTube site. And you don't have to be an expert. We can offer training on how to do that. But if you have the time and the heart to commit to being a part of this team, which will be led by Elder Mary Harden, who is the chair of our communications ministry from the session, please email the church. I've already received one or two emails just in the last 24 hours. But if you are willing to help us in our communications remain strong and relevant, we invite you to be a part of that team. Beloved, our time today has come to an end. I pray that you remain encouraged, that God continue to strengthen your heart, and that even though we walk sometimes through midnight gardens, that God will touch your eyes, your head and your heart, that we may see beauty even in midnight gardens. Let the church say amen. Let us stand now and sing our closing song. God bless you and keep you. God bless you and guide you wherever you go. Good to see you, Mr. Offit. Blessings to you. Come on, keep working. Keep working for Jesus. For Jesus till the close, the close of, of the day. The day Thank you, Queen. Lord Thank you, Kathy. You. Thank you, Miss Betty. And Thank you, Mrs. You Lloyd. Always. Come on, everybody. Praise God from whom? Praise, Praise God, God from whom? Come on, lift your voice. Come on. Oh, oh bless mm -hmm. Praise him, all creatures. Uh huh. Oh, creatures. Here below. Oh, my. Come on and praise him above you, heavenly host. Everybody, praise him above you, heavenly. Come on, praise him, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. and to our deacons who are here, our benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be and abide with each and every one of you as you go out of this place and coming into your several places, in your rising up and in your lying down, in your laughter and your tears, in your joy, in your sorrow, in your leisure and your labor, until at last you come to that perfect day where peace shall surpass all understanding. A world without end. Everybody, threefold, our man. Everybody. Oh. One for the Father, two for the Son. Our man. Our man. Last time for the Holy Ghost. Our man.
Be encouraged, beloved, until we meet again. God bless you. Thank you.